Listen. Imagine making the highest grossing movie of all time, and then having Doolittle be your follow-up. Imagine somehow ending up as the second highest grossing movie so far of 2020, even though they had a rough start, and still being in debt. They had paid Robert Downey around $20 million to be in this movie. It cost $175 million to make the whole thing, and even the people who they paid to see it for free at the test screenings didn't like it. This thing got pushed back after Endgame, only to meet its own, but really you know there's a problem when you're not even the best Doolittle installment. Let me explain. Man, I sent that to Gagan and he goes, that looks right to me. I was like, great, let's do this movie. <laughs> and literally that's it. It's always it, you know what I mean? It's always that thing of you click and you go, here's my, here's, here's my sense, what do you think? And, and then the other... The gal or the guy says, yeah, let's lean into that. You don't say, Robert Downey Jr. Now, I'll say that through his interviews, Downey has really talked about how much he enjoyed working alongside his wife, who served as producer in the film, on making this movie that his kids could see since Avengers was PG-13 and they don't do that in their household, and how they themselves raised their own animals back home, truly believing that everyone at some point or another has talked to an animal, be it their pet or the bugs they yell at on a daily basis, and I'm happy for them. That said... He don't tuck me in and love me 3000 at night, so for my 12 bucks, being heartfelt doesn't mean it's good. Especially when you just throw money at things. Like, this was supposed to be a children's film, uh, you know, an adventure geared towards the whole family, and so they got the guy who wrote Traffic? Syriana? Call of Duty Ghosts? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, be silly. They showed it to test audiences who acted like they saw another Universal movie, so they decided to push their spring date in 2019, right before Avengers, to the dumping ground that is January. They practically had three directors on this thing because the producers wanted to make it sillier, and so it was delayed nine months. They changed the name from The Voyage of Dr. Doolittle to Just Doolittle for Americans, and in the end, after all of the delays, after maxing out that $175 million budget with marketing and reshoots, to the point that the observer claims the movie needs to make 500 mil to break even what they figured this movie needed to be fixed was <laughs> see there's a target audience and then there's targeting the audience that said, this man was having a blasty blast on set. Pretty much the story revolves around a vet who can talk to animals, but then goes MIA after his wife's death. It isn't until two kids show up to his place that he goes back to doctoring, with Tommy wanting him to fix Craig Robinson the squirrel, and then this princess seeking help for the sick queen. Doolittle chooses to give the squirrel mouth to mouth instead. But then they realize that they need another 80 minutes to stretch out this movie, so they add all these random dumb obstacles in order for him to help the queen. There's a scene that's so bad it's good at the beginning that has Downey mumbling gibberish, because obviously, you know, in his house he just communicates with the animals, but they make the artistic choice that once the humans come into the picture to visit Doolittle, that this should happen. <laughs> It's not good, as far as I'm concerned. I'm the only human here. Does, does that mean he's speaking gibberish the rest of the movie in front of the human people? Y'all should have just put an asterisk like when comics translate from Farsi. Robert also does a Welsh accent the way he does indie films. It's a Welsh accent, right? Welsh accent, yeah, even Welsh people try not to do it. <laughs> um. It was so bad. I, the rest of the voice cast didn't even change their voice at all. I'm assuming they just, you know, wanted to keep them and, and they wanted people to know that it was them since they dropped all the money for them. But granted, they then straight up ignore the setting they chose, the time period. Because they had John Cena playing a polar bear, who sounds just like John Cena playing a polar bear. And since Kumail's ostrich, who sounds like Kumail can see him, they spend the entire movie pulling dude bro jokes. <laughs> Respect. Rami Malek's also in this after winning his Oscar, which Google found his performance to be too convincing, but his first feature after the gold is this gorilla named Chi Chi who has anxiety. Antonio was more pain than glory in this. I'm hearing big mouth voices coming out of this dragonfly. Michael Sheen made the pirate from the Wiggles look like Akbar Abdi with what he did here. And then they really had Octavia Spencer say, Everyone out! Do you understand the words coming out of my bill? How? But hey, 
It's a marvelous reunion with Tom Holland voicing a dog. And how they got their name, I will never know. Seriously, I'm lost. Banana makes perfect sense. But orange, mental. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Who is this character? Like <laughs> Be silly. This is like being stuck in hell, where the 101 minute running time drags longer than eternity. Like the CGI seems to be coming from different studios. I don't know how this happened. Look, some of it is super cartoony, while other animals look like first renders that they did on that new Lion King movie. Many times the audio doesn't even sync. The ADR is so horrendous, you, you could just tell all the overdubbing that was happening. The humans aren't even matching the animals' eye lines. Like, they forgot to buy the tennis balls on set so the actors knew where to look. It's almost like one director directed it, not knowing how to do CGI. So, so then they brought in another one super late to, to try to fix that. And when their budget got too big, they thought our wallets would fix it. Iron Man really died, so Doolittle could do little. And that's crazy to me because I really do enjoy watching Downey's work. And if you followed his story to the point where he is now, it's insane. Because 30 years ago, Robert Downey Jr. couldn't even get one pitch through for an SNL sketch. And now he's a global icon who can get full productions on a whim. I just wish it was something better than Doolittle. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this movie. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Um, I didn't cover the ending because I don't think I had an ending, but it's crazy to think that Universal had cats. Now they got this. I think the, the final numbers for cats came in right there and what, what happened with the box office, but I just saw that the music box theater is going to be running a drink along with Like, I got scared at first. I thought, oh no, they're going to be showcasing this artisan film. Nah, they're making fun of it. It's a part of the Get Drunk series. So at, at least, you know, it's crazy to think about it, but cats is definitely going to make its money back once they you know they're gonna treat it like the room again i don't know where they observed it but according to the observer doolittle has to make up that budget claiming it has to you know reach half a billy so that's i i think that's gonna be more difficult for it to do i've seen crappier movies with less known actors uh have stronger legs than downey's fake ostrich so maybe there is an opportunity but we'll see the voice acting again i, I do like kumail and i'm not saying it because now he can whoop me but every single character he voices is literally just the same inflections and and i'm hoping that with this new wave of voice acting with cgi you know because it was always animation but now you know, cgi is a new animation this live action animation i'm really hoping they don't go this lazy route of just hiring talent and then not having them i don't know be talented like there's not saying that there's anything wrong with keeping your same voice but voice actors are a thing and i feel like they're just going the cheap route it's not even cheap but they're, they're going the the less creative route and just having voices voice them if you know what i'm talking about but i don't know it's kind of annoying it's been a problem i hope they fix that because you know I don't see why you're being so lazy when you have $175 million on your movie, but that's what happens when you end up wasting that much money. Curious to know your thoughts. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Be silly.